Hi everyone, welcome back. In this section we're going to look at exponential growth and decay. Uh, what do we mean by exponential growth? Well, we say that a quantity, Q, is growing exponentially if Q can be represented by an exponential function. So if Q is some constant A times E to some other constant K times T. Here we're thinking of the quantity Q as a function of T where T is time. So a quantity is said to be growing exponentially if it can be represented by an exponential function. Okay, so how are there other ways to look at exponential growth? Well, one way, and this is going to be the important way for us, is if we differentiate this function, Q, with respect to T, then what do we get? Well, we're looking at the derivative of AE to the KT. And to take that derivative, a is just a constant, so it comes out. The derivative of the exponential, that's a composition of an exponential with this linear function, k times t. So we need to use the chain rule. So it's the derivative of the outside times the derivative of the inside. The derivative of the inside is kt, or the inside function is kt, so its derivative is just k. So this becomes then k a e to the kt. And what's interesting about this derivative is that the derivative of q with respect to t is k times q itself, because a e to the kt is just q. So this is k times q. So the derivative of q is just a multiple of q. What does that mean? It means that the rate of change in q, how fast q is changing, how fast the quantity is changing, is proportional to the amount you have the quantity that you have. This is a much more natural way to look at exponential growth and decay. This is another form of the exponential growth and decay equation. So we have these two representations of exponential growth. A quantity is growing exponentially if the quantity can be represented as an exponential function. Another way to say that is a quantity is growing exponentially if its rate of change is proportional to itself. These are equivalent ways to look at exponential growth, but it turns out that this one involving the derivative comes up a lot in application, and that's going to be a much more natural way to look at it. So I want to say one more time that this, this equation here is a natural way to think about exponential growth, because what it says is that a quantity is growing exponentially if the rate of change in that quantity is proportional to the amount that's present. Now this equation, dq by dt, equal to k times q, this is called the differential equation. Differential equation. And they're extremely important to, to studies of uh, applying math to areas of like, chemistry, physics, engineering. Differential equations crop up uh, all over the place. And the idea behind them is, oftentimes, uh, Mother Nature will communicate to us through a differential equation, uh, such as the thing you're studying. Maybe you're studying a quantity that's growing, and you can interpret from the situation that its growth rate, how fast it grows, has to be proportional to how much there is. Uh, think of population growth. The more people there are in a population, the faster the population should grow because there are more people that can connect and procreate and, and have babies, whereas the, the smaller the population is, the, the less rapid you expect the growth rate to be. So there's sort of a, an intuitive situation which you can then translate into a mathematical statement, and that statement involves a differential equation. So being able to study differential equations and try to determine what their solutions are is a very important area of math. And so here, what our goal would be is to say for this differential equation, can we find a solution to it? And in fact, we already have a solution to it because we sort of reversed engineered the differential equation in this case. But the idea here is that this is a description of Q, a quantity growing exponentially. We can get a solution. The solution of it is that q has to be an exponential function. It has to be of the form a e to the kt. So we start with a differential equation, which is an equation involving a function and its derivative, q and its derivative. It could involve higher order derivatives, second derivatives, third derivatives. This would be called a first order differential equation. 
because it involves only the first order derivative of the function and the function itself. Given this differential equation, what's the function that satisfies it? What function has a property when you differentiate it? You just get a constant times itself back. And that is the exponential function of this form. So we call this a solution to the differential equation. So just to summarize this, the solution to this differential equation, and maybe we say that we not only want the solution to that equation, but we also want the solution that satisfies an extra condition, namely that the function value at zero is some specified y naught. We call this an initial value problem. It's got two pieces to it. It's got an equation that the function has to satisfy and an initial condition. The function must pass through the point zero y naught. We call this an initial value problem, also denoted by IVP. When we encounter an initial value problem such as this, we immediately know what the solution is now. We know that the function has to be an exponential function. It's got to be some constant times e to the kt. Why did I write the constant as y naught here instead of a like we had before? Well, the reason is because we can actually see what that constant has to be. If I plug 0 into this function, I would get y naught e to the k times 0. e to the k times 0, that's just 1. So this is y naught. So that checks out. The reason that the constant was taken to be y naught because it should be exactly the initial value of the function. When you plug 0 in, that's what should come out. So instead of using a, I use the fact that a should be y naught in this case. Okay, so here's the idea. We've got a differential equation. We know what the form of the solution has to be. It has to be this exponential function or this exponential function. And then, with any given additional information we know about the function, we should be able to try to find these constants. The constant a, which in this case is y naught, and possibly even the constant k. And that's going to be our goal. So we're going to look at now some applications of how differential equations appear.